So, let us look at uh, uh, how we will be using this or how one can use it. So, let us look at some examples. So, let us look at f n of x to be equal to x by n, okay, n bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. So, f n is a sequence of functions defined on um, x to r. Let us uh, specialize this uh, for the particular thing. Let us take x is equal to r. So, let us take um, so that we can choose special things. So, let us take r to r. So, x is taken as the real line. Functions are defined on the real line. So, for every x fix f n of x is convergent. If x is fixed, it is literally like 1 over n that converges to f of x which is equal to 0. So, f n converges to f which is identically 0 point wise. Let us consider, let us take n equal to uh, n k equal to k and x also equal to k, right? n k the numbers equal to k and the point x you are in the real line. So, I can take, so what is f of n k x k? So, that is equal to 1 for every k, right? It is x by n. So, it is equal to 1 for every n that does not converge to f of right f of x k which is identically 0. f is the function which is identically 0. So, f at each x k is 0. So, that means what implies f of n k x k does not converge to f of x k. So, what we have done? we have right we have said for each there exists a sequence nk so i have found a nk nk equal to k xk equal to k say that this quantity is always one and this quantity we know it is zero so what is the difference it is equal to one so there is epsilon epsilon equal to one okay so that so implies mod of f of nk x k minus f of x k equal to 1. Hence, the sequence f n x which is x by n does not converge uniformly. So, uh, the criteria I gave for not uniform convergence that means, we are able to find a sequence n k of natural numbers and a sequence x k in the domain say that f of n k x k does not converge to f of x k right or the difference always remains bigger. So, that is what f difference remains bigger than or equal to 1. So, this sequence so that means, so we have applied this criteria. So, this criteria to this sequence, so this sequence converges point wise, but not uniformly. Okay, so, let us look at uh, some more examples. Let us look at consider f n of x uh, to be equal to x to the power n for x belonging to minus 1 to 1.
So, question is thus f and x converge does f and x converge point wise. Does f and x converge point wise to anything? x is between minus 1 and 1. So, mod x is less than or equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, this is the constant function 1, right. So, it converges to the value 1. If it is between minus 1 and 1 in the open interval, then this number x as in having mod strictly less than 1 raised to power n. So, goes on decreasing. So, converges to we have seen that converges to 0, right. So, f n converges for yes, f n x converges to f and what is f? f of x is equal to 0 if mod x is less than 1, it is equal to 1 if x is equal to 1. So, it converges point wise, right. Now, x to the power n, okay, I can suitably choose x, suitably choose n, so that this value becomes a, I can evaluate that easily. So, what do you think I should choose? So, let us choose, let n k and x k, I have to choose these two points. So, that if I let us, let us choose the n k to be equal to k itself. So, it is x to the power k, right. And x, I can choose whatever I like, right. So, let us choose 1 over 2 to the power k. I have to choose a number between minus 1 and 1. Keep in mind the domain is between minus 1 and 1. So, let me choose this. So, it, let this be so, this implies what is f n k x k. So, sorry not x to the power k, x sequence x k right. So, what is this value? Uh, that does not help, that is k by. So, let me choose slightly differently. So, this is minus right that does not a very good choice. So, let me choose it I want it to be a constant. So, let me choose it to be um, 2 to the power 1 by k will that help or 1 by 2 to the power 1 oh, ok that was ok. I this point goes out. So, I, I should not be choosing this point because this goes out. So, let us choose 1 over 2 raised to power 1 by k. Okay, that is okay. That is point is still between minus 1 and 1. Why I am manipulating all this? Because then this comes out to be equal to 1 by 2 for every k. Then this value comes out to be 1 by 2 for every k, right. And this does not converge to f, this value is not equal to 1. So, f of uh, 1 by 2 to the power 1 by k which is equal to 0 and right? f is 0. The point wise limit is 0 everywhere okay? except at the point 1 the value is 1 this is in between. So, implies so once again that implies so hence f n does not converge to f uniformly. Right? They are converging point wise, but they are not converging uniformly. So, the question comes, this is one way of testing when something is not happening. Can we give a criteria for something when something happens? Right? So, we want to know can we give a necessary and sufficient condition saying that f n converges to f uniformly. 
right. So, let us look at that for right for functions f n belonging to ok. I have to uh, now ok. So, let me look at. So, let us look at the space. So, let us look at consider all functions f x to r f bounded. So, we are going to look at bounded functions. Okay. So, what does it mean? So, that is if I look at mod of f x and look at supremum over x that is final right that is what a bounded function means and you will call this as the bound for that uh, function. I did not I do not think I gave a name for this ok I think probably I give we gave. So, let us write bounded x to r. So, the space of all or the set of all why space it is not a space set of all bounded functions x to r. Right. For every f belonging to B x r, we can define, we had already done it, right, the L infinity norm that is the supremum of mod f x, x belonging to x right this exists so call that as so this uh, obviously has those properties i am uh, listing again is bigger than or equal to 0 equal to 0 if only if f is identically 0 because if the supremum is mod f x is 0 that means f x must be 0. So, if and only if second alpha f is equal to I am just repeating that infinity thing that we had done. Okay. So, uh, for every f because supreme mod alpha mod alpha comes out and the third one that f plus g is less than plus mod d. That is also obvious strangle inequality because the supremum of mod f plus g will be less than or equal to mod f plus g is less than mod f plus <coughs> mod g. So, supremum will be less than or equal to supremum of those things. So, so, uh, this gives a metric on B x r. So, norm of f minus g right. So, that is that is a metric d infinity f g equal to. So, why all this being done? So, let us assume suppose f n f belong to B x r I think I wrote script B x r f n converges to f uniformly. So, assume these are kind of bounded functions and they are converging uniformly. So, that will mean what? So, that is for every epsilon bigger than 0 there is a 
and not depends on epsilon such that mod f n x minus f of x such that for every x belonging to x, this is less than this is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n epsilon. Now, if this is happening for every x, then I can take the supremum over x which exists. So, implies supremum x belonging to x of mod f n x minus f of x is also less than epsilon for every n bigger than n epsilon right because for every x something is happening so for the supremum that will also happen okay so what implies is norm of f n minus f goes to 0 as and goes to infinity. Saying that what is this quantity? This is same as this, right? Supremum of mod f n minus f that is a norm. So, norm is less than epsilon after some stage that means this goes to 0. So, what we have shown is f n converges uniformly. So, hence, so what we have shown, so hence f n converges to f uniformly implies norm of f n minus f all for bounded functions goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Right? So, let us look at uh, can I say the converse also holds. So, Conversely, so what will suppose norm of f n minus f goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Suppose that happens, right. So, go back in the way we write epsilon delta if you like that does not matter actually. So, implies for every epsilon bigger than 0 there is a stage n epsilon such that norm f n minus f is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n epsilon right that is the meaning of saying something goes to 0. But what is this quantity? This is nothing but supremum x belonging to x right. That obviously implies for every x belonging to x if supremum is less than epsilon then for every term it should be also less than epsilon. So, implies mod of f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon right uh, for every n bigger than or equal to n epsilon. So, what, what is the meaning of that? That means, the stage is not depending upon x at all right. So, that means, so that is f n converges to f uniformly. Right. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying, if for every x something is small, then the supremum over x also should be small. Right. And constantly saying if supremum is small, then every term must be small. So, that is the thing used if and only if that is all in both the things. Okay. We are not saying anything uh, great, we are saying if supremum over sub some things right, is less than epsilon, then each term must be less than epsilon. 
Conversely, if each term is less than epsilon, then the supremum must be less than epsilon. That's all. Nothing more. We are not saying anything. What we, but what we are saying is interpretation in terms of the metric, right? So f n. So the theorem says. So let us write the theorem. F n and f belong to bounded functions x to r. So let f n converges to f uniformly if and only if norm of f n minus f goes to zero. So essentially, we are looking at sequences in the metric space B X R under the L infinity norm. We are looking at sequences, right? In what is the meaning of convergence of a sequence in the metric space B X R? Okay, and that is given the name as uniform convergence, which is okay. So uniformly, and obviously, uh, corollary of this, f n converges to f uniformly implies f n converges to f pointwise. Right? Obvious because saying f n converges to f uniformly means the norm of f n minus f goes to zero. Right, and saying point wise is f n x minus f of x absolute value that goes to zero. So that is one of the terms where supremum is being taken. Right. So and converse we have already seen converse need not hold. There are point wise not converse not true. We have already seen many examples of sequences which are converging point-wise, but not uniformly. Here is another way of interpreting uh, this theorem. So, uh, see, we are saying that f n converges to f uniformly means in the metric space B X R under the sub metric, under the L infinity metric, the sequence f n converges to f. And we have already seen that if a sequence converges in a metric space, then it is always always Cauchy, right? Every convergent sequence is Cauchy. Every convergent sequence is Cauchy, right? Can we say that in this metric space, Cauchy also implies convergent? In the metric B X R, right? We want to know whether Cauchy is equivalent to saying a sequence being Cauchy is equivalent to saying it is being convergent. So let us write that. So, uh, so what we start with note: F n converges to F uniformly implies the sequence F n. Is Cauchy in B X R with? Uh, did we give what L infinity metric? Okay, with metric. Right, because this is equivalent to saying that norm of f n minus f goes to zero, right? So convergence implies Cauchyness in any metric space. Is that okay? What is convergence? A n converges to A. If A n is converging to A, A n must come closer to A after some stage. 
So if I take any two terms after that stage, they should be close to each other anyway. We have proved that every convergent sequence is Cauchy. In the real line, every Cauchy was also convergent. So we are using the fact here that every convergent sequence in a metric space is also Cauchy. If you like, you can write down the proof, okay? Because if it is, or if okay, let me write the proof here once again so that you feel a bit. So it implies Cauchy. So here is the proof. So let us say f n converges to f uniformly. So that is same as saying for every epsilon bigger than zero. There is a stage n such there is a stage n naught such that norm of f n minus f is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught, right? So that implies for every n and m bigger than or equal to n naught. Let us look at norm of f n minus f m. For Cauchy-Nash, we have to say that two are close. But this is less than or equal to norm of by triangle inequality for all the norm. So this is less than f n minus f plus f m minus f, right? So that is less than two epsilon. So if you want to be very nice, you can make it epsilon by two and equal to epsilon, right? So so this is the proof. Every convergent sequence is Cauchy. I am repeating the proof. That's all. Nothing more than that. Let us prove conversely. Every so converse is also true. So conversely, let f n be a Cauchy sequence. In B X R, we want to say it is convergent. Then there exists a function f belonging to B X R such that f n converges to f uniformly. Right? That is same as saying norm of f n minus f. Converges to zero. So every Cauchy sequence in B X R is convergent. Okay. So let us uh, prove that. If I want to prove every Cauchy sequence is uh, convergent uniformly, if it is going to be uniform convergence, I know uniform convergence implies point-wise. So first of all, I should be able to say that this, there is a f, say that f n converges to f point-wise. See here the problem is given something is Cauchy, I don't know what is f. What is going to be the limit? I have to locate a function and make a guess, make a conjecture. That also is the limit in the L infinity norm. So how do I get hold of that? So clue is. f n converges to f uniformly if i am able to find such an f then uniform convergence implies point wise convergence so f n should converge to f point wise also whatever that f may be so that gives me the clue that i should try to show that f n is point wise cauchy once it is point wise cauchy by the property of real line being complete it will converge somewhere and that i will call as the function f and then prove fn converges to f uniformly so to make a guess we will look at the known properties so the first thing is note for every x belonging to x fix the sequence f n of x is a cauchy sequence 
that is the cauchy is equal for x fix look at the values why obviously because if you like f n of x minus f m of x is less than or equal to norm of f n minus f m right for every x that is true because the right hand side is a supremum over all x left hand side is some x is fixed right and if this is going to zero then this is going to zero right so that prove that because fn is given to be cauchy in l infinity norm that implies point wise cauchy and hence limit n going to infinity fn x equal to fx so i define exists for every x right fn x for every x fix is a cauchy sequence so it must converge that limit i call it as f of x so for every x that is convergent so it has a limit right so limit is given a name it depends on x right limit will depend on x so it is a function of x so let us call it as f of x okay for exists for every x so so now i claim fn converges to this f uniformly this converges to f uniformly so if i want to prove fn converges to f uniformly all the fn's are given to be in the space bxr we don't know where is f whether f is bounded or not right so let us look at note we prove f belongs to bxr that it is bounded okay so to do that i have to estimate mod of f of x okay i know that fn converges to f of x okay ah okay so for that let us look at uh, fn cauchy in b x r we have already seen for every epsilon bigger than 0 there is a stage n not such that norm of fn minus fm is less than epsilon for every n and m bigger than n not okay All right okay so this is uh, this is another thing i should recall we also proved a theorem for sequences that if sequence of real numbers if it is uh, cauchy it must be bounded right so uh, recall cauchy sequences are also bounded right so implies fn is cauchy right so it must be bounded implies mod of fn supremum over n equal to some number say m is finite what is the metric what is the metric n l infinity metric so it's a cauchy sequence so it must be bounded so this is bounded and now that is okay now i can uh, prove so now mod of fn x now not minus f m of x is less than or equal to norm of fn minus fm okay that is okay yeah 
good. Note for every x belonging to x, this is true, and this uh, I can make it uh, less than or equal to if it's m, it is 2 times m. Okay. If this is true, supremo over n, so this is less than mod f, uh, norm of f n minus plus norm of f m, so 2 times. Okay. So, this is true for every n and m bigger than something, right. So, let m go to infinity, then you get implying f n of x minus f because it is converging point wise, f m x converges to f of x point wise. So, this is less than or equal to 2 m for every uh, x belonging to x. Is it okay? And that implies that f n minus f belongs to B x r. You can take the supremum. So, implies supremum over x of this quantity is less than 2 m. So, that means f n minus f belongs to x and that implies f also belongs to B r x r. But that is good enough. I would, we can conclude x also belongs. It has to belong actually, because f n is Cauchy and we are trying to prove it is convergent. So, is that okay for a, if you? Because I was trying to work it out. So basically, uh, this being a Cauchy sequence, it is bounded. So that means all the f n's norm of f n's must be less than some number. Okay. So that is this quantity, and that using the fact that uh, f n x minus f m of x is less than norm, right? because that is a supremum, that is remains bounded. So, the, for every x, this is bounded. So, you can let m go to infinity. So, that means f n x, this goes to f of x point wise convergence is already there. So, this is less than or equal to 2 m. And this is happening for every x, so I can take the supremum now. So, supremum over x of this quantity means this is finite less than 2 m. So, supremum of this and that means uh, f n minus f belongs to B x r and is a vector space, right? B x r is a vector space. So, f also belongs to that. Okay. So, finally, so uh, f n converges to f in B x r. Actually, that uh, is already there. Okay, so let us uh, so proof of that for every epsilon bigger than uh, zero, there is a stage, right, uh, and not such that f and x. Uh, okay, it's the same idea repeated again. The norm of f n minus f m less than epsilon for every n bigger than n not. Right. So, basically what we want to do is, uh, we want to show it is in this. So, let us uh, write for every x belonging to uh, x mod f n x minus f m x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right. And now, let m go to infinity for every n and m bigger than n and m Cauchiness. Let m go to infinity implying for every x mod f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. And this happening for every x implies norm of f n minus f is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. So, basically in Cauchiness n and m, so let one of that things go to infinity, right? so that f comes into the picture and at every stage you are doing that. So, implies f n converges to f in B x r. Right? So, what we are saying is uh, if we are looking at the space of bounded functions, 
proving something converges uniformly is equivalent to proving that it is Cauchy in the supremum norm.